Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody, no matter where you're from, I just wanted to say greetings from Miami. My name is Richard Manor, I'm Joico's Global Artistic Director. Thank you for joining us on Behind the Chairs Facebook page. It is a real honor to be here and to be able to share some education. We believe that education equals motivation. And for me as a hairdresser, I always want to be a better hairdresser today than I was yesterday. So I'm always absorbing, always learning and willing to grow and become better at my art. So thank you for joining. Today we're going to be working on textured hair. I know a lot of you out there maybe don't work on textured hair. A lot of you specialize in textured hair. I don't specialize in textured hair, but I do work on textured hair. Uh, and I wanted to share with you the way I would approach it. From the get-go, I want to just say I'm not here to dictate what's right or what's wrong. There's so many different ways of cutting textured hair. I'm going to show you a way, my way of approaching it, and hopefully we'll create a beautiful result. Fingers crossed. This is Desiree. Say hi, Desiree. She's got beautiful textured hair. I think as hairdressers, we need to be able to work with all types of texture. I say this a lot on stage and I'll say it again today. It's like a clothes designer. You don't get a clothes designer who only specializes working with silk or cotton. They work with silk, cotton, leather, wool, all types of fabric. Hair is fabric and we need to be able to sometimes expand our understanding of the fabric and work with all fabric, all texture so that we are inclusive, not exclusive. I think that's very, very important. So today, what we're going to be doing on Desiree's hair is we're going to go a little bit shorter. Um, and what we find is her hair is quite flat and creating this triangular shape. What we want is more volume throughout the whole shape. So the silhouette will be a lot more rounder and have more volume throughout. So when she dries it herself and styles it, she'll get a lot more bounce and volume. Now the approach to this hair for me is different. Normally with straight hair or wavy hair, what I would do, I would originally shampoo the hair, cut the hair, then style it. In this case, we switch it up. We shampoo the hair, we style it, and then we cut it. Why? Because I want to see how the hair naturally sits when it's dry. She doesn't walk around with wet hair. She walks around with dry hair. And even as I was preparing the hair, she was like, I am so glad you're cutting it dry because there's going to be no surprises when we dry it. It's going to be dry. We're going to see how it sits and then we're going to cut it step by step. Um, so the products we prepared with, uh, the combination of the Joy, Joy Gel Medium and the new Curl Confidence, a, com a combination of these two, we applied on towel dried hair hair and then we diffused it and then we just scrunched it when it was completely dry to create this soft controlled curl. If you want to come around the back, I want to show you what we're going to do. If you just look down for me. So what we have is we have a lot of pieces at the bottom that's coming into a slight U. It's very stringy through this area and we have very strong lay a step of layer through here. So when you look from the profile, you'll notice how the hair actually sits like if you just go back slightly, there we are. It's very triangular. So it, it, the layers sit there and you've got this triangular shape. What we want to do is we want to take the length up a little shorter and then begin to layer all of this hair. So we're creating so much more volume. Okay, so we're going to get straight into the haircut. I can grab those from you. Um, as we're working, I would love questions. If there is any questions that you guys have, please ask us and my lovely camera woman would uh, ask me the questions that you're asking and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to cut this section by section, okay? The idea here is not to put my comb in it. So I'm just grabbing a section right now with my finger because we know with this type of hair, once you start putting the comb in, if you want to come around the back, you're going to start to separate that curl. So I'm literally going in with my finger as you would with a comb, taking a slight diagonal section, okay, and making sure that there's an element of balance to this section, okay? So we're taking that, separating it, and we can see that we've isolated this underneath area first. And we're just gently twisting this hair away and then clipping it so it's out of my way through here, okay? so. I let the hair breathe, I, I move it out so I can see exactly the length, and you can see how dry the ends are. Now if you come closer, there's some shorter pieces underneath, 
and longer pieces on top. I think that's where I want to cut it to. I want to join the underneath area. So what we're going to do is we're going to start cutting it section by section. Now there's a way of cutting. I'm not going to come in and cut it straight across because I don't want blunt lines everywhere. I want it to look natural. So I angle my scissors like so and then I just gradually cut that through section by section. And that's how we do it. All the way through. So it's almost, I always say it's almost like cutting a bonsai tree. You're cutting purely visually to create balance. But as we elevate the hair and we work with the layers, we start changing the elevation. The elevation is elevated higher for volume and shape. And that's what this technique is all about. It's about understanding the texture, working with the hair, not against it, and then using a technique that's going to complement the shape and give you the desired result that you're going for. Okay, so as we started to cut, you can already start to see the hair looking so much healthier. Come around this way so you can start to see. I've, I've cut this here, so it already looks healthier. And as we get a little bit higher, you'll start to see how I change my elevation. So we're going to work section by section and working visually and then allowing the hair to breathe. Now, if you step back, you can start to see that it's probably just a little bit longer just in here. There's like one random hair through in here. So we're just going to go back in and then cut that a little shorter so it balances out with my shape all the way through. Okay, so if I can just stand back and have a look at that, that looks already so much healthier. Again, maybe just a little shorter on this side. And now I think we've got a better balance on both sides. Okay, so that's the first section. I know this is different than cutting straight and wavy hair because we're not using the comb. We're using our fingers. I think our fingers are the best tools we have as hairdressers. And by using our fingers and letting that breathe, that is already looking so much healthier. Have a look at the floor. We've cut the right amount off, but we've kept the right amount on. And that's the key. People pay for what's left on the head, <laughs> not what's on the floor. All right, so we're going to go into the next section. Again, we're going to apply this section by section. Hold my scissors for me if you don't mind. Thank you. Be careful. They're very sharp. Uh, about one and a half inch section. So we can start to see the length. Twisting that again away from the face. Let's get that one piece through in here. Okay. If there's any questions, guys, please ask us questions. Can you see any questions, Morgan? No? No questions yet. Okay. So if there's any questions, please feel free to ask. We are here to support you in any way we can. At Joico, we believe that education equals motivation, education equals growth. So we're here more to share with you, not dictate what's right or what's wrong. Like I said in the beginning, there's so many different ways of cutting textured hair. This is a way of doing it, if you want to come around the back. Um, and we can start to see now how the hair is sitting on top. So again, very stringy from the layers, the length is up to there. So what we're going to do now, scissors please, is we're going to start to elevate the hair slightly higher, okay? So, separating the texture of the hair, now we're going a little bit higher and we start to create a little bit more volume, okay? And as we elevate the hair, you'll start to see the shape create volume and that's the goal for us. We want to move away from that triangular shape that we had when she first came in. But again, we don't want to lose too much length. We, we do want to lose a little bit of length, but not too much because we like it sitting just on the shoulder. Is that right, Desiree? She showed me a picture earlier. And I think, you know, pictures are good. Consultations are so important. I think when you sit down with the client, I always say we have two ears and one mouth to listen twice as much as we speak. So firstly, listening to what they want. And if they have pictures, I think that's a great way to communicate because sometimes as hairdressers, we say, you know, we'll do a reverse inversion, a zigzag section, and that's not their language. Or they can come in and say, I just want one layer. What's one layer? So to have pictures and to exchange ideas, I think is essential so that you fully understand what the goal is of the client. So when clients offer to bring pictures, I always welcome them. So we can have a thorough consultation and then cut a hairstyle that's going to be suitable and giving Desiree the desired result that she wants. Yay, she's, she's already happy. You haven't even seen what I've done yet. <laughs> Desiree, were you happy when I said to you I'm going to be cutting this dry? I was so excited because usually when I do get my hair cut, it's always wet first. Yeah. And then like when it's dry, it shakes yeah. up and it looks completely different. Right. Um, but now that it's being cut dry, I know what it's going to look like Ex when I'm walking out. 
Exactly. And that's, that's the idea. For me too, I, I don't want any surprises when I've dried it off. And I think that's where a lot of people can, can miss the mark in terms of they cut it to a certain length and then before you know it, when it's dry, it's jumped too high because they misread the curl. And listen, I've done it, especially when I was younger as a hairdresser. I've done that before. And it's the worst feeling because curly hair takes so long to look long because it spirals into a curl. So it's very, very hard to grow it long or make it look long in a matter of months. It takes literally years. So we've got to be respectful of hair and keep within the boundary of that consultation. I think that's so important. Like you could be a great hairdresser, but if you're not listening to what the client wants or you're missing the mark from the consultation, your client's not going to be happy. So you, we, we've got to listen to what they want and work with them, not against them. You can start to see how the hair now is starting to elevate. And as we elevate higher and higher, we take our sections higher and higher. And that will begin to give us the volume that we want to create. The good thing is once we've completed this haircut, we don't have to style it. It's already styled for us. So you're just working in a reverse way. You, you, you're shampooing first, styling second, and cutting third. Okay, so next section. You got gorgeous hair, by the way. Thank you. Very, very blessed. Next section, we go a little bit higher, making sure we have a balance with the section. Just want to take this a little bit higher on this side. Okay, now we can clip that away. Thank you. And if you notice, I haven't got a comb in my hands. I'm just using my fingers and I'm using the uh, scissors as well. Okay, so I'm just letting the hair breathe to see where it sits. So what we want to do, starting from here, we want to elevate this even higher now. Look at the elevation. I'm, I've gone from one length to 45, now to even a little bit higher than 45. And we're starting now to work the layers that little bit shorter, a little bit higher to create more volume for us. All right, so we're just grabbing the hair piece by piece, almost like I said in the beginning, almost like a bonsai tree. Like you just create, when I say that, I mean like visually. People that cut bonsai trees cut it very patiently, very technically, but they also do it step by step to give us an overall balance. And that's my goal through cutting this type of hair. Give it the balance that we're looking for and the volume that we're looking for and to make the hair so much more healthier. Okay. So that's already sitting so much nicer on this side. Going to continue working with a little bit more elevation, as you can see. And that's giving us the volume that we want to create through in here. And from the profile, I'm constantly checking how it looks. From the profile, I'm constantly uh, touching the hair because it likes to breathe. It wants to move. So I want to see exactly how that's sitting so that we're cutting it in a way that it's balanced and giving us the volume that we're beginning to create through in here. That's looking really good from that side. Gonna continue through in here and then work section by section. I would love to hear some questions. I want you guys to interact with me. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, now, gonna let that breathe. Maybe come around this side if you want, so you can see that, keep the, maybe stand right here, Morgan. So you can see the baseline, what we're creating here. See how the volume is starting to come out? Okay, now, making sure we got balance all the way through and making sure I'm happy with this perimeter line, but making sure I'm also happy from the profile. You've got to look at it from the profile as well, because that's what's going to give us that rounded shape. You can already start to see how it's starting to lift and elevate. That's because of the elevation that I've put with each section that I'm taking. So I don't really get too technical in terms of getting my comb and picking it up because the hair would just frizz. It's about picking up section by section and creating a shape visually and technically. If you wanna come around this side, we're now gonna take a section, oh, if you can hold that for us. Basically, we've done the back from the top of the ear to the crown. This back section is, is done for now. We're now gonna take a section through the sides and then start to work horizontal slightly on a diagonal through the sides here. The reason why I've done it on a slight diagonal is so I have more hair on the hairline. So a slight diagonal back. Why? Because it's very fine here. A lot of this hair is broken and a lot shorter. It's not because of anything besides being the, what we call the receding area. Everyone has that. So firstly, we look at the length here. Okay, so we're gonna start to 
work a little bit through the very baseline. Before I do that, I like to separate the hair just so I can see exactly where it's sitting. You can see how dry a lot of those parts are. So, I'm gonna go around, work this a little shorter through it here. All right, keep in mind that the balance is key for the perimeter and for the layers as well, okay? I have a question, yay. Thank you for asking. These are the Me Too Tiny ones. They're called Crossover Act and they are the handmade Japanese scissors. They're, they're hand hammered as well. They're rose gold and these are really incredible scissors. So these are the Me Too Tiny ones I'm using. These are quite versatile, so you can use it on wet or dry hair, which for me, I love having those versatile scissors so that I can work with all types of hair texture, no matter what I'm working on, whether it's wet or dry. Okay, let's have a look at the front here. If I can just have a look. That's a, I think that's a nice length. That's what we said, collarbone, right? We, we agreed on collarbone, um, and I think that's what we've got here. We've got a nice, can you see that? Yeah. I'm gonna lift you up a little bit. There you go. And I think this is important, guys. As you're working through the haircut, don't wait till you're finished and say, oh, do you like it? What, speak to the client. The consultation, doesn't stop until you finish the haircut, until they walk out of the salon. So that consultation should continuously continue with the client because as you're cutting, you might see something and say, hey, I like what we're doing, but maybe if we went a little bit shorter around the front, it will complement your face. Would you be cool with that? She'll be like, no, or yeah, let's go for it. So the consultation is continuously continuing because we're not just saying a, having a consultation at the beginning and then ending it. Keep that consultation going and make sure that as you move the hair, you're asking, are you happy with that length? How does that feel? The happier they are, the happier you'll be, believe me. And the busier you'll be too. How's that feeling there, that length? That's Good, perfect. yeah? Okay, so let's, let's do the next section on this side. So I'm gonna come on this side first. I know the sections look a little bit weird, <laughs> but I just, for me, I'm focusing mostly on the section um, that we're working on. So now that we've done the sides on the left, we're gonna do the exact same on this side so we've got a balance. So I'm just gonna twist that out of the way. I'm not too worried about what's going on here. I'm focusing more on what we're cutting. Once you've done that, don't forget to, you know, place the hair in its natural form. Let it breathe a little bit, let it sit, and then you're gonna work the perimeter so it's gonna be balanced like it is on the other side. Yes, loving questions. Thank you. Yes. Beautiful. She answered that perfectly with that second <laughs> option. Correct. Because with guidelines, you need a comb to see a guideline, right? But because I'm elevating hair visually, I'm elevating it higher and I'm checking for balance, technically and visually. So your second answer is the correct answer. Um, always look in the mirror as well, because the mirror never ever lies. So when I come to check for balance, I check visually, but I also check technically. I can't now because Morgan's right there. <laughs> I'm kidding, thanks Morgan. Um, so just wanna make sure that I'm happy with the line through here. I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm happy just a little bit on this one here, like maybe half an inch, and that will give me a nice balance on both sides and a little bit there. You, you'll see when there's a random hair that's hanging, you just gotta work it so it gives you that balance all in all. But that's looking quite balanced for me. Just a little bit on here, I'm gonna cut. Again, don't forget, keep your scissors on an angle so it doesn't look like a solid cut. So when I'm cutting, I'm not cutting straight across, I'm coming on an angle and that makes the end look much softer rather than just solidly cut off. I'm liking that. Are you that. using any attention at all while cutting? Any tension? Attention. I'm sure they're probably gonna say tension, okay. tension. Um, the tension I'm using is gentle, just really like gently, I'm not, I'm not stretching the curl out. It's curly hair, it's textured hair. So you want it to sit gently. I'm just elevating it out with no tension, actually. So just working that a little bit higher because I want to create a little bit more volume. And that's giving me the curl and the volume and the shape that I'm creating here. If I had to pull it out really tight, that's tension. But I'm forcing the hair to do something it doesn't want to do. Now, maybe the next question is gonna be, well, okay, you're cutting it like this, how is it gonna look if she wants to blow dry it straight? Which I'm sure someone's probably thinking that. 
I'm glad you asked. The re- I, I, I did this quite often and I cut like this often. I actually did a live for Joico literally last uh, two weeks ago with the exact same um, technique on a different model. And I, I cut that model's hair often and I cut it like this. And she blow dries it straight. And she says, Richard, when it's blow dry straight, it's perfectly balanced and all the layers sit seamlessly on top of each other. So because I'm going section by section, I'm constantly checking for balance. Even when she blow dries it straight, it's going to work. Okay, and you can let me know and attest to that. Okay. All right? Do you, you have know, a- I guess the people are just joining know one more time how you styled it and how yes. they get rewatched. Yes, so guys, thank you for joining. Richard Manor here. What we're doing is we're working on textured hair. This is Desiree. Normally with straight or wavy hair, I would shampoo the hair first. I would then cut it and then style it. We switched it up. We shampooed the hair, we styled it, and now we're cutting it. How we styled it is we used the Joico Curl Confidence and the Joy Gel Medium. We combined these two on wet hair. Uh, we then diffused it and softened the hair once it was dry with our hands. Why I'm saying that is because it's important to make sure the hair is completely dry before you touch it with your hands. Because if you touch it too much when it's wet, it's going to get too frizzy. So. Once we did that, now we're seeing how the hair wants to sit and that's why we're actually cutting the hair dry. So there's going to be no surprises when it comes from going from wet to dry. The problem, and I think you've experienced this Desiree in the past, is when people have cut her hair or people with textured hair wet and then they dry, if they don't understand textured hair, sometimes it can dry too short. Have you ever had that by the way? Yes. Okay, you've had that. So the fact that we're cutting it dry allows us to see how the hair sits and so we have no surprises when it comes to styling because the hair's already styled. So you're spending the same amount of time, you're just switching the last part. You're not cutting it first and styling it, you're styling it first and then cutting it. I hope I answered that. Okay, cool. So we've we're already started to see the volume. We're going to come back on this side if you want. Um, Morgan, we're going to take another section through here. And as we get higher with the sections, we're going to get higher with the elevation also. By the way, thank you for the questions. There is no such thing as a bad question. The only bad question is the one you don't ask. So ask away. Okay, so we're letting the hair breathe. You can start to see what was previously was like a triangular shape. We want to create more volume through in here. Okay, so as we get higher, the elevation gets higher. Have a look at how high the elevation is now. Okay, so we're just going to cut a little bit off that. So you've got more layers. See how already automatically it's got a little bit higher. There we go. And there you go. So we're starting to create this rounded shape that we're trying to achieve. And we're literally just going in section by section. It's really easy and simple once you start giving it a go. And I think as hairdressers, we can't refuse clients. We can't be exclusive. We need to be inclusive. And I think something that's you know taken place over the last few years is a healthy challenge for us as hairdressers to work with texture that we're probably not trained to work on or used to working or working on working on or even confident working on. That's what today is about. I wanted to show you one of the ways that you could approach this hair. It's not the only way um, to approach this kind of hair to create volume, to create texture, and to be able to cut this type of hair texture, which I'm really enjoying. Can you start to see the volume take place? I love that. I'm loving this. And as we get higher, we're going to go even higher and higher. So it's just not triangle. And let's do the next one. I want to do this into two sections. And then we're going to do the other side. Um, okay, so as we get higher, we're going to elevate the hair higher, like I've said before. So now we're working through here. Have a look at the elevation now. I'm going to go from about here now. Okay. And this is now going to start to give me much more volume. And I'm just sliding the hair away with the scissors. And keeping the elevation going. Very visual, guys. Very, very visual. Again, the key is to keep moving the hair so you can see what it is that needs to be cut through in here. And constantly allow the hair to move and you'll see, they'll just jump out at you. The hair will jump out at you on what actually needs to be cut. And you can see the volume being created here. A little bit more in here, a little bit more there. And then just allow the hair to breathe and move and you can start to see that volume take place. Are you liking that? I do. Yeah, good, good, good. She's happy. I'm going to cut a few, uh, just a little bit off the front here. Not too short, just the very end, so they're nice and healthy. And what it does, it shapes the front 
that little bit more for me and it complements her beautiful face. And I think that's the key. She's got a beautiful face. I think when there's too much hair covering the face, it doesn't accentuate what we have here. So it's all about complementing the face shape and the hair texture. All right, okay, cool. Let's have a look at that from the front now. If, can you get that silhouette for us? Can you see how it's starting to round off? There's one hair there that's really bothering me. See, it just speaks to you. You can just go back in here. You can see exactly which one that is. And you can start to see the volume take place. It started to elevate bit by bit. We're elevating the hair all the way around. This one here as well. Again, keep moving the hair. It's really feeling. It's really about feeling. It is technical, but you're also expressing yourself uh, through feeling to cut this type of hair. That's why I think this type of hair is, I think for me, the funnest kind of hair to cut because you get creative and you express yourself as a hairdresser. Last section for this side, okay? You'll see how this sits on top. See, before it was just very triangular. You could see where the hair is sitting, the long pieces. The idea is to move away from that. Okay, so let's just see where that's sitting. All right, let's start from this one here. I'm gonna elevate that even higher. Elevate even higher. Elevate even higher. And you can start to see the hair creating a lot more volume. This one here. Be beautiful hair. You have beautiful ringlets, by the way. Thank I'm thankful to work on your hair. And working through this back area as well, just a little bit through in here. I'm gonna actually see it from the front. Wow. See the volume that it's creating? See how it's creating this, this volume through in there? I think I want to just go a little a bit more through in here. So here, we're just going to hold that up slightly higher and literally take the ends off. And this will give us a nice shape and more volume. If I can have a look at that one more time, Morgan. There we go. Beautiful. I love that. See how it's a bit healthier through the front? And it's at a length that we, we like. Is that right? Yeah, that's perfect. Good. I should just pay you every time you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's actually looking exactly how I wanted it to look uh, and giving us the volume that we want to create as well. So just keep, keep touching the hair and you'll see which part you like, which part you don't like and what you need to do just to give us a bit more of that shape and volume that we're trying to create here. That's nice. I'm liking that a lot. Okay, so that's that side done. Beautiful. Let's have a look one more time. Are, are they liking it? What do you guys think so far from this? It's nice, right? It's healthier and it's got the volume that we were looking for. We've cut the shorter pieces around the front as well. Always look in the mirror. The mirror never lies. So see what you need to do. See how it's responding. Sometimes when you look at something so much, you can lose focus. So by looking in the mirror, it gives you a better idea of exactly what you're creating and what you need to do. I love those pieces around the front. Okay, so let's go around the other side. Any other questions? Um, Jennifer likes it, first of all. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, so one more question here. Yeah. This technique is no different than any person can do. Do we need an education for this? Absolutely you do. Because it, it might look easy, but there's definitely elevation there's body position, there's balance, there's experience when it comes to understanding this type of hair, to moving it around and making sure technically and visually it's all balanced. So it's, I'm not just coming here, just picking up hair and cutting it. There's experience and technique that is involved to create such a beautiful shape. I make it look easy and hopefully it is easy for you. And I'm sure it is easy for many of you out there, but there's definitely education that is involved to feel confident in approaching this hair in the right way to create the shape and the balance. So hopefully I answered that. Okay, so gonna continue now. And I think, you know, when it comes to experience and education, I'm gonna share a two minutes, a, a minute story. There was a, a gentleman who was responsible for building all the skyscrapers in New York. One of the best in the world, true story, about 20 years ago. Long story short, he retired. And they were, the company he was working for was in the middle of building a skyscraper and no one could solve a problem. So they had to call this guy. Hey man, I know you've retired for like three months, but we come across a problem that no one could fix. Do you mind coming in and helping us? He goes, absolutely, I'll be there in an hour. He comes down, he looks at all the maps, 
He asks a couple of questions and he says, come with me. They go up to the 64th floor. He gets a piece of chalk and goes, knock this wall, do this, 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 and this, and everything should be great. So they follow his instructions. They knock the wall. They do the five things he said to do. And it all worked out. One week later, this is over 20 years ago, true story. One week later, he sends an invoice for an hour's work for 10,000 American dollars. They're like, whoa, that's a lot of money. Let's give this guy a call and find out what's going on. Hey dude, how are you? Thank you for coming in. We solved the problem. We just got your invoice. Can you please justify $10,000? He said, absolutely. $1 for the piece of chalk, $9,999, knowing where to put that piece of chalk. What's my point? When it comes to experience, your value will increase. Now, it might look easy, piece of chalk, but the $9,999 is knowing where to cut it shorter, where to elevate it, how to create balance, how to work with the client, and giving the client the desired shape that she wants. That takes many, many years to gain that experience. So even though it might look simple, it comes with a lot of experience to create such a shape that we're creating. I hope I answered that. And, and, and just as an encouragement, as you get better as a hairdresser, don't be afraid to increase your value because your value is increased. So you should be increasing your prices also because you're becoming more experienced and experience is valuable. I hope I answered that. Bit of inspiration for today. Education and motivation and inspiration. I should wrap this through, right? <laughs> All right, so we're going to continue working. You see the hair that's over here. We're going to go a little bit higher now. Again, everything a little bit higher because we're creating more balance and more volume through here. Okay, please keep the questions coming. I love them. And I, I again, I want to reiterate, education equals motivation. I'm still learning. I'm still under construction. And I think we all ought to be so that we can become better as human beings and better as hairdressers as well. If you agree with me, say I agree in the chat. Give me some love today. I need some love. Okay, so the balance here, you can see this is corner just in here. Just needs a little bit. Okay, so it's going to go a little bit more there. Okay. Through in here as well. You can start to see the shape now on both sides being created beautifully. I love that. And you know, for us at Joico, we're always about the joy of healthy hair. Healthy hair is vital. It's key. Uh, for us, not just for us, but for our clients. No one wants dry, damaged hair. So we, we've got to keep that in mind whenever we color the hair, whenever we cut the hair. The goal is to create beautiful, healthy hair. And that's why our colors defy damage, um, which is a, it, it's a bond protector, especially when you're coloring hair. It's all about keeping the integrity of the hair so it's nice and healthy. All right, let's do the next section. But before I do that, I just want to check. I'm, I'm lightly grabbing the hair and finding out where it's a little bit longer. Again, I'm not stretching the hair because then the hair will look longer. I'm just lightly grabbing it, elevating it higher where I feel it's a little bit longer. So it's balanced on both sides. Even what I'm doing now, you know, it takes experience to do without overstretching the hair. Okay, so that's kind of a bit more voluminous for me. I want to check this part through in here as well. Just a little bit more elevation through in here. So it's exactly the same on both sides. I'm loving the way that's sitting there. Let's just check there, there. They kind of have an encouragement. Yeah. Everyone can follow a guide, pivot around the chair, and cut round layers. But visually cutting the hair like he is, is creates a one-of-a-kind haircut that no one else can recreate. There we go. Thank you. I will pay you later. Make sure you message me and I'll Venmo you. <laughs> Thank you for that encouragement. Was that Megan you said? Yes, Megan. Thank you, Megan. And it's true. It's very, very true. It's not easy just to cut visually, but you need to get that balance in there and work with this type of texture. All right, I'm quite happy with that. Let me just check the very, very front. A little bit more just in here. Okay, next section. We've got two more sections through here, and then we're going to start to see exactly how the shape is sitting all in all. All right, again, gently, if you find that it's tangling, uh, just gently, uh, one second, it's just a little bit knotted through in there. Take a slightly bigger section. Okay, there we go. 
and then we can see as we pick up the hair how that's going to sit so we lift that up allow this to breathe the very ends of this are very dry so I'm going to take that off there we go all right so I'm going to just let that separate and have a look at the hair so you could have a look previously look how long these layers were right they just sit all the way through the bottom that's what gives you that triangle effect we want to move away from that triangle effect by elevating this hair higher okay so section by section we elevate even higher and we begin to cut so we're creating volume all the way through in here okay you can start to see the hair that needs to be cut that's sitting over all the layers that we have here okay a little bit more in there and constantly move the hair so you can see exactly what you're creating as well so elevate the hair higher and that gives you the volume now before I move to the side I want to just check the back and make sure I'm happy with both sides with the way that's sitting and it's sitting very nicely and in a balance in a beautiful way for us okay it's gonna tidy that up yeah and just look from the profile and any random hair that sits out we're letting it um, just cutting it visually really okay through here we're elevating this higher 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 and coming on an angle and cutting that through so it's all going to be nice and healthy moving that around and checking now both sides in the mirror this is the hair that we've got so let me move that out of the way because that could be deceiving now I feel like it's still a little bit longer around the front here a little bit higher elevation the higher the elevation the softer it's going to be when you when you lower your elevation it's going to look a little bit more solid almost like a step so don't be afraid to elevate the sections so it's nice and soft that's looking really nice just a little bit in here I feel like it's a bit long all right and you're constantly checking for both sides and making the way that's sitting again shaking it out letting it breathe look at the volume here can you see that it's beautiful look that way for me again yeah nice I love that it's sitting nicely can I just see Morgan if you can move to the side again just a little bit more there and a little bit more in here see what I'm doing I'm letting it breathe I'm letting it move I think that's the key to seeing how the layers sit and how the balance is as well okay see something here I like that a lot okay I want to get the front the same so just around the front we're taking a little bit off with these pieces again just to give us shape but also to make the ends a lot healthier as well that's nice okay that's this one here and then we could just put a, a touch of water back in here just to allow the hair to get back to its natural texture water does that no no we're good we're good okay just want to have a look at that front bit here okay I feel like just in here it's a little bit longer Ashley says creating that balance using the mirror keeps great custom cuts thank you that's true the, the, the mirror is so key to create that balance okay so last section which is here my one here you can see come have a look so look, look at the layers where they are they're just all the way down my layers are up to here their layers uh, previous layers are down there and that's why it was so triangular so I've got to cut all of these hair bits of hair here so I let it breathe so it's more section by section and then again we're going to see where it's sitting separating that hair look at it just hangs very very low and that was the problem with the previous cut and to be honest she has probably hasn't had it cut for a long time when was the last we had it cut did it rain? over a year ago so you know it's, it's just because it needs a good cut and a new shape one thing I don't like doing is 
And I think it's something that we shouldn't do as hairdressers is bag the previous hairdresser. Oh, your previous hairdresser didn't do a good job. You don't need to do that. I think if you do a great job, you know, they'll come back for you rather than you having to make someone else look bad. Obviously, if there's a haircut that's asymmetric, they'll notice that, <laughs> you will notice that. But when it's, um, you know, a haircut that's grown out for a year, I don't think it's fair to say, oh, well, the previous hairdresser didn't do a good job. I, I, I don't think we need to do that as hairdressers. I think we should build each other up, not tear each other down. If you guys agree, say I agree in the chat, please, because I think you do agree. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's let that breathe a little bit. Oh, I'm liking this so much. The balance is just beautiful through the very base here. You can see from the profile as well. So coming around the sides. We're getting some agrees. That's good. So a little bit longer in there. So I, I check the balance through the top here just by gently picking the hair up like that. And if I feel like there's one side that's a little bit longer, you just cut it. So just check for balance on both sides. That's good on both sides, actually. Checking here. Just again, gently holding with my fingers. Just a little bit on here. And a little bit around through in here as well. And then in the middle, just want to check that. High elevation. The higher the elevation, the more the volume we have. Look at this. Isn't that nice? Can you see the difference? Mm -hmm. See how it's not so triangular anymore? It's got volume, it's got layers, it's got movement, it's complementing your face shape through in here. And it's just, it, it's breathing so much more. And I think that's the key with this type of hair is to get balance and shape and volume, you know? Put your feet together, your feet are together, cool. Let me just see something from the front. Okay, I just wanna tidy this up here, making sure I'm happy with both sides in terms of the balance. Letting that breathe, moving that hair away. Just going a little bit more on this side so it's got a balance through the baseline, not just through the layers as well. Shake your hair a little bit. Yeah, put your hands in your hair a little bit. How what would you do? Yeah, shake it a little bit. Nice, push it forward for me. Push all the back forward as well. Okay, now be straight, but just stay, stay straight there for a second. Come around here. Let's look at that balance there. I feel like just in here, it needs just a little, little bit. There we go. I like that a lot. What are you guys thinking of the shape? It's beautiful. It's got the volume in there. I, I'm, I'm loving it. I think you I think as hairdressers, we ought to check for balance, even in the mirror, making sure that we're happy with the way that's sitting, where the volume is, all the way around. Again, the mirror never lies, so it's nice to have a look. I think this top layer here, I'd like to cut just a little bit more off, just to break it up. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go through, okay, and just little bit of twist cutting okay this is just going to soften the very initial layer so it's not so solid and i'm very gently going through and that through and that gives us just a bit of more random layering through the very top section very gently guys very gently allowing that to breathe i'm going to come around this side as well Good question. Great question. I want him to look at me. As you gain more experience, you learn all the rules. Once you've learned all the rules, you've got to then learn how to break the rules. That's how you get creative. If you're constantly just following rules, that's great as a foundation. But the more experience you become, the more free you become. But don't neglect the foundation. So you've still got to be technical but you could also be visual because of the experience that you've gained along the way. And that comes with experience, kind of like a little bit about the story I just told you earlier. So the more you do something, the more comfortable you're gonna feel. So this is why I'm trying to encourage people to work with textured hair. Don't neglect those clients that have this type of hair because you don't feel comfortable. Train yourself, 
practice. Ask some friends of yours that have this kind of hair to come in and work on this type of hair. Like I said, we don't want to be exclusive. I never want to be exclusive. I always want to be inclusive. I think that's the goal for us as hairdressers to work with all types of people. Why would I want to imagine this beautiful girl, Desiree, comes to you for a haircut. You look at her and say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't cut your type of hair. What a shame to refuse her because not knowing this type of hair. And that's why I'm trying to encourage and challenge every hairdresser watching me to learn, to gain the knowledge, to level up as a hairdresser, to be able to work with all types of fabric. And so for me, it's something that, listen, I don't specialize in this type of hair. I wasn't comfortable doing this hair maybe three years ago. But over the last three years, I've stepped out of that comfort zone. I've started working on this type of hair. And the more I've done it, the more I've enjoyed it. The more I've done it, the more confident I've become at it. And the more I've done it, the better I've become at doing it. And that's all it takes. It, takes, it just takes you doing it, even if you have to start on someone that is a friend rather than a client. Does that make sense? Hopefully I answered that. No, I, I do not. I would not. I, I think thinning shears on this type of hair, and I, I not, again, I'm not here to dictate what's right or wrong. Some of you might, and I'm, I'm glad you guys do. I, I don't think there's only one way of doing this. I think thinning shears, it would just, what it does, it makes, the, especially when doing it with layers, it takes too much out and it makes the hair weak and flop. I want the hair to be bouncy and healthy. So the, the twist cutting very lightly just gives me that what I, that, that feel that I want without making it too thin. Just takes a, just, just enough out for me without making it too thin. I think sometimes with thinning shears, it could make it look a little too thin, personally. Again, personalizing is personal. So I'm not the only one that says this, this is the only way. Hey, if you do it and it works for you and you do it in a way that works without making it too thin, please, that's, that's cool. There's no right or wrong. Remember, it's, it's all personal. That's why it's called personalizing. But good, great questions. Loving the questions. I'm loving this. I actually really like this a lot. So I want to just put my fingers in it one more time. Look, just look down for me. Just nice balanced shape. Nice. Stay like that for me for a second. I just want to, now that I've got her tilted forward, I feel like you could see, just if you, can you see this area here when I shake it? Can you see that there's a piece here that looks a bit longer? Can you, can you see that on camera? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how you check what's long and what's not. You come through now, this is a little bit longer. Cool, this is a little bit longer, and this is a little bit longer. Now, I'm gonna shake that one more time. We get just a little bit here, and a little bit there. These are different techniques to check for balance, guys. And that's what we do. We want balance on both sides. Once it's balance, that's what makes a haircut great. Because any of us can make hair look good in the salon. We just make it look good. It's easy. We're hairdressers. It's not about how we make it look. It's about how the client maintains it at home. It's after when she washes her hair, can she make this look good? And that's why balance is essential. Look at that. That's much better. Just do that little bit more there. Again, I'm looking in the mirror. Mirror not lying to me. Just through in here. And do it bit by bit. Don't go in too aggressive and too quick. I think that's a mistake a lot of hairdressers do. Bit by bit so you can see what's needed to be done and doing whatever needs to be done to create that balance. Love that now. Just a little bit more in there. Okay. Tip upside down, not upside down, back. Cool, love, love. Let's put some product in this. What do people think? Do they like it? It's nice and, do you like it? Do you like it? Yeah, nice. Let's put, she's beautiful, right? I'm gonna put a little bit of the uh, oil. Where is the... Did you be able just to review what products you have to use? Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, just to recap, I'm gonna start finishing with the K-Pak Color Therapy Joica Luster Lock Oil. But um, let me just do this first and I'll do a little recap. Three pumps. Always add a little bit, then a little bit more. Lean back for me, lean back. And just scrunch that in, scrunch it in. Scrunch it in, scrunch it in, just to give us a little shine. Don't want it greasy at all, but we'll want a little bit more shine in there. Okay, let me just see that. Put your head forward. Oh, look at that. Just gives it that separation. 
that texture. This is cute too. You know, if you put it like half up, you've got those pieces that come down as well, which is cute to have those little. Isn't that cute? It's, if you... very, it's very wearable. Well, someone sounds happy. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put um, a little bit more oil. This type of hair kind of absorbs the product. So you could be that little bit more generous, but again, add a little bit, then add a little bit more. And I'm gonna to explain to you what I've used all the way through. I just wanna get that separation in there. Do you ever wear it to the side? Um, sometimes, I yeah. have in a while. What, what do you guys, it looks nice on the side as well, right? That's very, like, the whole 80s vibe of curly <laughs> hair is beautiful as well. I think, and, and when you wear it to the side, it just gives you that extra, look at the volume you got there. Do you know what I mean? What do you guys prefer, side or middle? They both look good anyway. It looks good both ways. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of um, separation by utilizing the, where is it? Here it is. One of my favorite products. The Defy Dam Joico Defy Damage Invincible Freeze Fighting Bond Protection. Basically, this is a shine product and it actually, um, gives a, a very light hold, very light hold. I don't want to use the word hold because it's not a hairspray in, in terms of the hold, but it does give us a really nice shine. So I'm using low heat, low um, speed, and just creating some volume and separation all the way around. This is a beautiful product, this. Close your eyes. Say it again. Yeah, let's go. There you go. Love this hair. Again, separation, volume. Gosh, I like it. I don't know. I just, I like it on the side as well. I do too. You do? That's, it's just pretty. There's something pretty about that. And you just kind of like scrape it with your fingers. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what are guys like, side or middle? Let's have a look. We did do the side. I kind of like that. Cute. Love. You know what, let's just do it in the middle because we've dried it that way. Mm -hmm. All right, stand up for me. Come around here. I'm going to do a little recap. Get, if we can get those lights there. Yeah, stand there for us. Okay, guys, so this is a recap. We can get the other light. Stand in front of the light for me. Um, let's take the gown off as well if we can. So just to show you the volume and the texture. There we go. Okay, so turn around for me. Yeah, and just shake your hair around. Shake it, yeah. Beautiful. Stop shaking it. Let's have a look. Beautiful, beautiful. Hold this for me if you can, Morgan. Hold this for me. There's this one hair that's bothering me. Hold that for me. I'm like so fussy and I'm perfectionist and I think we all ought to be. Just this one right here. I think that looks visually nice, right? Let's see that. A little bit more there. Let's have a look at that in the camera. Loving that. Can you see the balance, the volume, the shape? Show us the profile. Show us the profile. Yeah, oh, look at that volume, guys. And hold that for me again, uh, Morgan. Yeah, nice, thank you. Just one little one there. Can you, can you see how the hair tells you where it needs to be cut? There's just random hairs that will sit randomly. Other side for me. Yeah, hold that for me. Gorgeous, stay there. Here. Love this. I think that's, that's pretty much how I would like it to sit. Stay there for a minute. Just this little bit here. How's that volume there? Let me see. Beautiful, love that. Okay guys, so just a quick recap. Why don't you hold that camera while I do a quick recap. So we started off use, utilizing these two products, the Joy Gel Medium and the Curl Confidence. We applied this on wet hair, then we diffused the hair till it was completely dry. Once it was dry, we then cut it all the way through. Section by section, we pulled the hair out 
uh, around the perimeter and then we worked section by section all the way around elevating the hair out higher and higher each time we went through to give us this volume that we have uh, and that's the key there is to pull the elevation out visually make sure you got the balance so it's a lot more voluminous around the front we took a few shorter pieces out so if she ever puts her hair up she's going to have some beautiful pieces coming down which i think looks very very nice and suits desiree's face shape so i hope you guys have enjoyed my class today working on desiree's textured hair thank you for the questions thank you to behind the chair thank you to joyka for having me today and if you want more of my content be sure to follow me on instagram at richard manor and you'll see a lot more education guys have a lovely evening have a lovely afternoon have a lovely morning wherever you're watching from big god bless you and goodbye Bye. see you later